What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports, and we continue here with our projected record schedule preview series. A team that surprised a lot of people last year. Northwestern up next. Before we get to 2024, let's look at back look back at that schedule from 2023. Here was the schedule last season for Northwestern. Uh, they played Rutgers and Duke in the non-conference, and, and or did not play Rutgers in the non-conference. Played Duke in the non-conference. Also played UTEP and Howard. So they had a couple of easy games, and they lost to Duke. And, you know, starting one and two with a loss to Rutgers, a loss to Duke, you would not have expected this team to finish um, with eight wins. Uh, just what a, what a job that they did last season. But, again, you look at the schedule, uh, it really wasn't too bad. They did have to play Penn State out of the East, but they didn't play Ohio State. They didn't play Michigan. So pretty favorable schedule. But, of course, no more divisions in the Big Ten. It's a brand-new conference, really, as we get to 2024. So here's that schedule. I will break it down. First, look at the non-conference. Miami of Ohio, they play Duke again, and they'll play Eastern Illinois. And then we go to the home schedule. Again, those three games, they'll have Indiana, Wisconsin, Ohio State, and Illinois. Because they don't play a non-conference game on the road, that means they'll get five conference games on the road, four games at home. Um, Wisconsin, Ohio State, going to be tough. Illinois, Indiana, very winnable games for Northwestern. So you're looking at it already. If they can win their three non-conference games, beat Indiana and Illinois, they're already up to five wins without even winning a game on the road. Uh, let's go to the road schedule now. And it's going to be tough to get a win here. you got Washington, Maryland, Iowa, Purdue, and Michigan. All of these, I think, will be tough games to get on the road. Uh, Maryland, Purdue, maybe games they can win. But again, it's going to be tough. It's, it's going to be tough for Northwestern to uh, have the success that they had last season with the schedule. It's just a tougher schedule than what they had last season. Uh, again, you've got Michigan there on the road. You've got Ohio State. Um, you've got Washington on the road. It, it's going to be a much tougher schedule. So they'll start with Miami of Ohio on August 31st at home, then Duke on September 7th, Eastern Illinois on the 14th. Three home games to start things off, and then they'll play at Washington on September 21st. That'll be their first conference game, and they will have to go out west for that one. They get a bye week, so have some time to recover after that game before playing Indiana on October the 5th. Then they play on the road at Maryland on October 12th. They get Wisconsin next at home on the 19th, at Iowa on the 26th. And it's back-to-back -back road games at Iowa and at Purdue. That's that's going to be pretty tough there. Uh, with the, That's the only spot on the schedule where they have back-to-back -back road games. Um, they get a bye week after that, though. So after you go out west to, to Washington, you get a bye week. And after back-to-back -back road games, you get a bye week. So I guess the bye weeks are in pretty good spots. Uh, Ohio State obviously going to be a tough one there on the 16th. And then Michigan on the road on the 23rd. Yeah, they've got Ohio State and Michigan back-to-back. -back. Uh, that will be tough. And then Illinois to close it out on November 30th. So, again, uh, the back-to-back -back road games will be tough. Uh, you look at, at Ohio State and Michigan back-to-back. -back, that's going to be tough. Uh, Maryland and Wisconsin back-to-back. -back. How about Maryland, Wisconsin, Iowa? Maryland on the road. Wisconsin and then on the road at Iowa and on the road at Purdue. So three out of those four games in that stretch are on the road. That's going to be a difficult stretch right there. And so, again, this is a much tougher schedule for Northwestern in 2024 than the one they had in 2023. Of course, Northwestern was a huge surprise team last year. Again, 7-5 and five the record in the regular season. Our projection was actually 5-7, and seven, so it was closer than what most people predicted. I personally predicted we go 3-9. and nine. So did Athlon. The over-under was at 2.5, where you might could find it at 3. So this is a team that had very, very low expectations. And, of course, losing Pat Fitzgerald was a big part of that. But, hey, it, it didn't really matter. They went out and had a good season and uh, proved a lot of people wrong. Again, going 7-5. and five. Let's see what the projection is for this year. Again, here's the schedule, and this is the scale that we use. If it's under 20 or over 80, those are games that are pretty much guaranteed wins or losses. 20-29, 71-80 games where I think the spread is going to be pretty comfortable. Double digits, 30-39, uh, 61-70, to 70, more like a touchdown spread in those games. Uh, games that you know, you're going to have a favorite, but they're not going to be a huge favorite. So I think we can start with Eastern Illinois. That's going to be your one easy win. I think that they should be favored by you know, 24, 28 points, whatever, in that game. Uh, no reason they should lose that one. I'm going to put Miami of Ohio in the blue. I think they'll be favored by a couple of touchdowns. But this is not a bad group of five team. And it's week one. Northwestern not exactly expected to be a powerhouse in the Big Ten this year. Uh, I think you, you hope for middle of the pack if you're a Northwestern fan. And so I don't think that's a guaranteed win, but they should be favored uh, by a decent amount in that one. And then you've got Duke, Indiana, Illinois. I think because these games are at home, and I realize Northwestern doesn't have a great home field advantage, but I, I use the same formula for all these teams. 
Um, th those are our teams where I think Northwestern is a little bit better than them, and they get them at home, so those are in the purple. And again, I think Northwestern favored by six or seven points. Duke not expected to be as good as last year. Illinois is kind of a mess. Indiana is a wild card. I actually think they could surprise this year uh, with their new coaching staff and all their roster changes. Uh, so that one might actually be more like a 50-50 game. But again, just using our formula, it does come out in the purple. So you've got three games there in the purple. Then you've got some games in the yellow at Washington, at Iowa. I think Northwestern are going to be about a touchdown underdog in both of those games. Uh, these are teams that I don't think are, are a whole lot better than Northwestern. Washington might not be that much better. Um, Iowa has potential, I think, to be a decent amount better than Northwestern. But because these games are on the road, that's why they're in the yellow, just like the ones in the purple are in the purple because they're at home. And so these are the games that I think they're going to be a slight underdog in. And then a bigger underdog against Ohio State and Michigan, probably a two-touchdown underdog in both of these games. They do get Ohio State at home. If that one was on the road, that one would actually probably be in the red, but I'm going to give them a, a slight chance in that game. But again, they're probably going to be a two-touchdown underdog against Michigan and maybe even more than that against Ohio State. And that's going to leave us with Maryland, Wisconsin, and Purdue. Uh, you know, these are all 50-50 games. I think Northwestern should be better than Purdue, but that game's on the road. Um, so that one's going to be a 50-50 game for me. I think Wisconsin probably a little bit better than Northwestern, but that game is at home. And again, I don't think there's a huge gap there. So uh, those three games are really the swing games. If they can beat Miami of Ohio, Duke, Indy, or Eastern Illinois, Indiana, and Illinois, that gets you to five wins. If you can win two of these 50-50 games, you can get back to seven and five. Or just win one and get to a bowl game, and that's actually what the projection would be. So Northwestern projected to go six and six when you average everything out. Enough to get to a bowl game, not quite as good as last season. But I think you'd take that, again, with a tougher schedule. Uh, the new Big Ten, and uh, again, just, it's just a tougher schedule than what they had last season. Uh, but seven and five, definitely a possibility. And who knows, things go just right, maybe even eight and four. Uh, but it, it could go the other way. This team could be five and seven or four and eight. But again, our projection is six and six. Do you guys agree with that? Do you disagree? Your thoughts on this team? Let me know down in the comments below.